Okay. Yes. All right. Here at New Birth Church, we have focused in on our theme. Our theme is lift every voice and sing. And we we've been looking at the song, the Negro National Anthem. Some people nowadays, they call it the Black National Anthem or uh, the Black National Anthem slash hymn. It's in the Methodist hymn book. Right. So it is a hymn. Um, it is being introduced in Congress right now as being maybe considered to be the national hymn. Him. Not the national anthem. Not the national anthem because it's been a big uproar. A lot of uh, people are upset about that, but it's the national hymn. We're uh, pushing for that to take place in Congress. Uh, but anyway, make, make a long story short. We've looked at James Weldon Johnson and the song. Let's look at the song. Pastor Ruth, mm -hmm. we've looked at their accomplishments. Just read just a couple of them. We're not going to go back through it like we did a few weeks ago. Oh, he was okay. a principal, the first mm -hmm. black principal of a high school in Florida. First one to pass the bar in Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the first <clears throat> professor at New York University. Mm -hmm. uh, it, he did lots of tremendous <laughs> things. Uh, chosen to be the first executive secretary for the NAACP. <clears throat> That's like the CEO. He was the very first CEO of the NAACP. His brother, mm -hmm. who wrote the music to lift every voice and sing, was okay. Rosamond Johnson. Uh, he did tremendous uh, things also. He authored four books, two in col collaboration with his brother, right. uh, James. Uh, he was in Broadway shows, and he wrote music for many Broadway shows. Mm -hmm. He was actually in Porgy and Bess and Cabin in the Sky and all of that. So they were very, tremendous movers right, and shakers right. uh, in the early 20th century. But we want to look at the song. Let's look at the song again. <coughs> Lift every voice and sing till earth, earth and heaven and ring. You all know that ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as a rolling sea sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us facing the rising sun of our new day begun let us march on to victory is one here's the next one we learned this one last week stony the road we trod bitter the testing rod felt in the days when hope unborn had died yet with a steady beat have not our weary feet come to the place for which our father sighed we have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. Wow. The blood of our ancestors. Out from the gloomy past till now we stand at last where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. Here's the last one. Mm -hmm. This is one we're going to learn today. We're going we're going to sing all of them today, right? Right. And this That's is the uh, third verse and third course, and we're going to do all of them. Uh, God of our weary years, <clears throat> God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, kept us forever in the path, we pray, lest our feet, and I love this here, man, this is just, <clears throat> this is, this is food for the soul, mm -hmm. lest our feet stray away from the places, our God, where we met thee. So you see our relationship with God here, right. we've come a long way but we can't lose our relationship. Look at this. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world. Wow. We forget thee. Shallow beneath thy hand. Protection. May we forever stand true to who? Our God. Uh -huh. And then true to our native land, Africa. Mm -hmm. Africa. And whatever country we might come from. I don't mm -hmm. know. Our native land. Let's, let's sing this, y'all. Let's sing it. Y'all ready? All Everybody right. ready? If you're ready, y'all ready to sing? All right. Get your pipes tuned up. <laughs> Pastor Ruth is trying to get herself together because, you know, I can't sing. I just try to harmonize every now and then. And and Jay Harris, uh, our organist, singer, going to be a future praise and worship leader. When we get back in, he's going to be singing some praise and worship. Jay was making fun of me last week. Jay, I, I saw that. I saw that last week, Jay. Jay Harris made fun of me. He says, trying to hit those deep notes. Jay. All right, I'll get you Y'all pray for y'all's pastor right. because y'all already know. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Lift every voice and sing. Lift every voice and <clears throat> sing. Let's go.
lift every voice and sing. Feel earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us facing the rising sun of our new day begun let us march on till victory is one stony the road we trod bitter the chasing rod felt in the days when hope unborn had died Yet in the stay, the feet have not our weary feet come to the place for which our Father sighed. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered we have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered out from the gloom we passed till now we stand at last, where with the white gleam of our bright star is cast. <clears throat> All right, that's one. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us thus far on far on sorry the way thou who has by thy might led us into the light keep us for it in the in the path we pray lest our feet stray from the places our god where we met the lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget be shadowed beneath thy hand may we forever stand true to our god true to our native land all right all right
Thank you. Thank you, darling. I know a couple you, of those darling. had to get them right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ruth. You did a good job. That was a lot of singing, too. Uh, and if you notice, I bowed out of that. And I, I, I felt like I probably should uh, stay out of that. <laughs> Let you let you handle it. I'm trying to harmonize for a second. Uh, yeah, a, a hot second. <laughs> that's, that's just a hot second. But thank you. The words of that song is yes. so so poignant and mm -hmm. relevant for us today. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see definitely <clears throat> where we come from. Mm -hmm. Not just from Africa, but the trek across the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. being sold as property here in the Americas and for my brothers over in England, Britain, and my brothers down in South America and the I Caribbean islands. Mm -hmm. That's a part of our journey, a part of our trek. And, and slavery is a big part of, of how we got here. Mm -hmm. And the reflection of it is powerful in that what we had to endure when you look at that versus where we are today you see that resiliency mm -hmm. you know that that we as a people have and we are believers of god we've always mm -hmm. been believers of god. Mm -hmm. and but we tend to see certain things in scripture and not want to deal with it Mm -hmm. And as the Rosaman brother, as the uh, Johnson brothers, Rosaman and James Weldon Johnson wrote about slavery and trusting in God, you sometimes see this dynamic of what we think as conflict. Well, mm -hmm. why, why would we embrace a book that seems to embrace slavery? Right. I mean, that, that's true. That's the that's, question. This, we need to put that out there. And uh, as an African-American pastor, I have yet to really hear about anyone really spend any time teaching on it. People mm -hmm. kind of stay away from it, but I don't want to stay away from it. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want to talk about it. Remember, I'm a history teacher, <laughs> first and foremost. I'm an educated history teacher. Got my degree from the University of Louisville. I taught school history, so, uh, social studies. Uh, uh, you know, so, so this is my backdrop. It's my expertise. I was, mm -hmm. Pastor Ruth, kind of taken back, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about slavery, especially as it relates mm -hmm. to the Bible, the condition of being enslaved, held, or owned as human shadow, uh, <laughs> or property, or bondage here. And mm -hmm. I, I want to look at this uh, because it's important that we as African Americans can speak intelligently about slavery and the Bible, mm -hmm. where, what it means, what was going on, there's some of the dynamics there. And uh, we'll try to address some of that on today. Mm -hmm. So that's the topic for today. What the Bible says about slavery, what the Bible says about slavery. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, I'm sorry. I'm just going to say, if you have not already, yeah, go on and share. Make sure you share the stream. Share. This it's is good. a good one. This is good. a good one. This is a good one that we all need uh, to be able to intelligently talk about this this subject, especially here in mm -hmm. Black History Month. And people are going to question you. I'm sure they questioned you before. Why? It's a white man's Bible. Right. You know, the slave masters used it. Yep, they sure did. They sure did use it. Mm -hmm. uh, and they use certain scriptures out of that also. We're going to point out some of those. There was a movie that came out, The Birth of a Nation, that, man, just kind of rocked my world. Yeah. Uh, I think it was back in 2016. Mm -hmm. And uh, in doing so, Ruth and I, we went to the movies. We saw it. And uh, in seeing it, I mean, it kind of shook everybody's world. I know. That's I think good. it was one of the best, personally, one of the best movies written about slavery and uh, as, as far as the accuracy of the abuse and, and things like that, I think it was mm -hmm. pretty, pretty close, spot on. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I know this is horrible, but one of the things that I like the most about the movie mm -hmm. is that the uh, slaves got back at the slaveholders. 
<laughs> at the Masters and got back at the Slave Holes at the end. Mm-hmm. Because the story was about <laughs> Nat Turner. Here's the bottom line. Hey. In front of you is uh, Nat Turner. And uh, what, what we saw here was um, Nate Parker. He directed it. Mm-hmm. And it's very, it's not for the skittish person. I'm no. going to say that. It's no. not for, it's very graphic. It's close to real. Uh, mature teenagers can watch it and adults. Uh, it's emotion, mm-hmm. emotionally edgy. I'll, I'll kind of put mm-hmm. it like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it tells the story of Nat Turner. Many of you know that story. He was an uh, enslaved Baptist preacher who lived on a Virginia plantation. And he was owned by Samuel Turner. And with rumors of insurrections taking place, this slave master was told by a preacher, you should have a black preacher come in and preach to your black slaves. Mm -hmm. And they would tend to use this scripture here. All right. Please Mm -hmm. share the stream because we need to deal with this today. First Mm -hmm. Peter chapter two, verse 18 through 20, it says slaves in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. So when he was reading this, you could see he was real yes. hesitant. He didn't want to really read it because they this was the sl- they forced him to. Uh, it was a way of keeping the slaves subservient. Right. Nineteen. For it is commendable if a person bears up under the pain mm. of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. I'm going to explain this towards the end. Right. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? So at, by this time, everyone in the theater who's not very knowledgeable about the Bible, people mm-hmm. were feeling a little edgy. Mm-hmm. You could feel the thickness in the theater. Uh, you could cut it, man, with a knife. Mm-hmm. And it says, uh, but if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. So this was a scripture that was read to slaves, people of God. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, they thought that it kept uh, the slaves Slaves subservient. subservient, Right. That's what they thought. Mm -hmm. And so the purpose of today is I want to get straight to it. I want to share with you today that a careful examination of the scriptures reveal that God actually deplores the mistreatment of humans. Mm -hmm. Yes, he actually does. Let's get through some things here, Pastor Ruth. Mm -hmm. And I have it here in my notes. I want you to read it for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's small print, but I wanted to give it to them. Uh, Mm -hmm. It uh, it comes from a book called The Dictionary of the Old Testament Pentateuch. The Dictionary of the Old Testament Pentateuch by Mm -hmm. T.D. Alexander. And uh, if you could start there, Israel's treatment of slaves Mm -hmm. was was actually progressive. progressive. Now get this, people of God. Let me preface this. Slavery was an etched in construct of society, ancient society. Slavery was well before the laws of Moses was even written. So first Mm -hmm. and foremost, the Bible did not construct slavery. God did not make up slavery. Right. Say that again. (laughs) God didn't create (laughs) slavery. All right. Humans did. It's a part of the sin issue. We read out of Isaiah. Mm -hmm. What did Isaiah say? The world is broken because Mm -hmm. people have not obeyed God's laws. When you don't obey God's laws, anything goes. Mm -hmm. And so somewhere in history, this is before Moses existed, before the laws of Moses were even written, Mm -hmm. slavery was already an indelible part of of the social construct get that mm-hmm. in your constitution and so i want you to do a little it. reading here okay yes israel's treatment of slaves was progressive israel's identity as slaves free to serve god has a direct bearing on their treatment of slaves both permanent chattel slaves and fellow hebrews in bond service stop right there mm-hmm. now when you study the bible you will see when god's people were in slavery when they were released from slavery, it was at that point, okay, mm-hmm. that their identity as freed slaves then had a direct bearing on mm-hmm. their treatment of slaves. Remember, right. slavery had already existed. Right. It was already indelibly etched into every culture, Chinese, African, you, what we call European today, uh, 
Asian, the Middle East, slavery was just a part of society during that time. And there were so many different types. And I have to say this, that we don't have time to even get into all the types mm -hmm. of slavery. But I'm going to boil it down uh, without uh, overly uh, simplifying, simplifying it. Yeah. All right. In just a minute. But look at this. Okay, mm -hmm. continue reading, Pastor yeah. Ruth. The treatment of chattel slaves indicates that these slaves are considered human beings. Male slaves are to be circumcised so that they, along with the female slaves, may participate in the Passover meals. Slaves must be given rest on the Sabbath. In contrast to the laws of other ancient Near Eastern nations, slaves who flee their owners and come to Israel are not to, to be, be returned, returned to, to their them, masters. Or not to be returned right. to their masters. Nor are they to be oppressed, but they are to be allowed to live wherever they please. These are scripture references. Mm -hmm. So I want you to get this picture. In ancient times, slaves were seen as subhuman. All right. They weren't treated with respect and honor. But when you study the ancient, ancient cultures, and you look at the law of Moses, you see that the law of Moses was actually a progressive document that actually gave uh, honor and humanity mm -hmm. to slaves. I know this sounds crazy for us today. Remember, we're out of context. We're not living during that time. During that time, slavery was mm -hmm. normalcy, so to speak. And so the codes that God created when his people came out of slavery, all right, mm -hmm. remember, had a direct bearing on the treatment of slaves. And what God did in his codes were he was moving people away from slavery. Remember, in Deuteronomy 23, mm -hmm. pay attention. It said, and Ruth, you just read it, that mm -hmm. slaves who fleed their owners and came to Israel mm -hmm. to live with the Jewish mm -hmm. people were not to be returned to their masters right. and they were to be allowed to live free and wherever they li wanted to live. Then you have this other, and I just, I want to jump a little bit ahead. You had the law where if a kinman, a kinman, yeah, you can switch back because we'll go back and finish reading it. Okay. If this is good, someone, uh, and you're learning something, you're being educated. This is, this is all a part of the process of being a Christian is to be educated. Uh, with all thy getting, mm -hmm. get understanding. That's what the scripture says. So when you, you hear something, you got to understand what it means. Mm -hmm. Here's something else. This was in the law also, that if your kinsman or fellow Israelite fell into debt, because that happened a lot, mm -hmm. they would sell themselves into slavery. But according to God's law, they could only serve for so many years or up until the year of Jubilee. That was a set in stone festival in Israel where everything was supposed to be set free. So God's idea of slavery was that every human being was to be treated with honor right. and should be treated right. fairly and not harshly. You go back and read it. Yes, it does address slavery. Mm -hmm. But God did not create the construct of slavery. What the Bible does is, all right, listen to me very carefully. <laughs> it neither really condones slavery or really, uh, it doesn't really condone slavery. It looks like it does. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say it condones slavery, but it condones a certain type of slavery where the slaves have to be treated as humans right. and decent, and they have to eventually be set free. Okay. Are we clear? We're not sidestepping mm -hmm. the subject. It is what it is. Right. That's history. We're studying history. All right. And so in the Bible, God came up with these progressive ideas. If a slave runs away and comes to you guys, you protect them. Let them live wherever they want to live. They're not supposed to be returned. If one of your brothers uh, sells themselves in slavery because of debt, well, then what? You can only allow them to serve so many years and the scripture mm -hmm. also says you can't treat your brother as a slave. You have to treat them as a brother. Wow. Okay. So, so we have to look at everything in context, mm -hmm. in context. Let's go back and finish reading this, sure. Pastor Ruth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, let's see. The slave's personal dignity is also evident in the prescriptions concerning personal injury. So in Exodus 21, 
20 through 27, read it mm-hmm. when you have time. Yes. If a master abused a slave to the point where he knocked out a tooth or maimed that slave, they had to let the slave free. But the master had consequences too. Okay, continue. Mm-hmm. Read it. Since the punishments for mistreatment are meant to restrain the abuse of slaves, clearly the personal rights of slaves override their master's property rights over them. Let's read it again. Clearly, the personal rights of the slaves in the Old Testament, the personal Mm -hmm. rights of the slaves will override the master's master's property rights over them. Okay? Are you getting this? So, Mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do is set proper context. There was slavery Mm -hmm. throughout history. There has been slavery and different types of slavery. All right? Are we clear? Mm-hmm. But now we know that the Bible's main thrust has always been, even from Deuteronomy, when it addressed slavery and it gave new codes to slavery, the main thrust of it is so that people could be free. Read free. that, Pastor. Mm-hmm. Luke 4, 18, 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This was Jesus speaking in the temple about his responsibility. He's speaking about spiritually freeing people and physically freeing people. How do we know? Mm -hmm. When Jesus healed people, all right, Mm -hmm. he healed them and delivered them from their sins he forgave them of their sins but at the same time he healed their physical presence their physical body rather yeah. and so jesus here in this scripture is speaking about spiritually setting people free mm-hmm. and physically, physically setting people free are you hearing me people of god all right let's take it to the next step yeah. the bible's main thrust is freedom mm-hmm. the prophets right. even the prophets prophet jeremiah go ahead. condemn slaveholders who ignore the jubilee rule and force their countrymen to become slaves again. Mm -hmm. So even the prophets spoke about the illegitimacy Mm -hmm. of people trying to keep people in slavery when they should have been set free. Mm -hmm. Okay, am I preaching today? All right, that's Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 34, 16. Jeremiah 34, 16. Let's go on. Now, without overly simplifying this, I had to put two categories together to get us through this teaching. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are two major categories of slavery you will see in the Bible. You will see. Yes. That's what I said. Volunteer. Volunteered slavery. I I said this just a minute ago. (laughs) Volunteer. Yes. There were some people that volunteered and that were the reasons why they volunteered slavery. Pastor Ruth. Um, Let's go. uh, Let's take it a step further. Hey, some wanted to work off a debt. You see mm-hmm. that in Leviticus. Read that for me, Pastor. Yeah, Leviticus 25, 39. If any of your fellow Israelites become poor and sell themselves to you, mm-hmm. do not make them work as slaves. All right. This was not the oppressive kind of slavery. Mm-hmm. God would never have a human being oppress another human being. Say that again. God would never have human being oppress another human being Mm -hmm. because humans are made in the image of God. Right. All right. right, right. Can I say this also, Pastor Ruth? Uh, Well, let's, let's go to my next point. B. Here's Mm -hmm. another one. Others had, Uh, mm -hmm. others had no other family and would rather join a wealthy family and enjoy some benefits rather than be alone. All right. In Galatians chapter Mm -hmm. three, Galatians chapter three, you will see that Paul uses, uses what is called a tutor here in the New American mm-hmm. Standard Bible. I think in the NIV, he's called a guardian. The word that's translated here is pedagogy. Pad means slave, gaji means, and I'm not pronouncing it all the way right, but it means a teacher. And so what Paul does is he uses this tutor as a metaphor for explaining the purpose of the law of God. Stick with me here. This is Mm -hmm. some good teaching here. Mm -hmm. Good deep teaching. Mm -hmm. Put your dentures in. Paul was trying to explain the importance of the law of Moses because there were a lot of people looking at the law of Moses and said, well, now we're 
we're Christians, we're free, we're free from all those rules. And Paul says, well, what the law did was it acted like a tutor. It acted like mm. the tutor that you guys are familiar with in Roman culture. What was a tutor or guardian? It was a slave, an educated slave who took care of wealthy people's children. Mm. All right. These slaves volunteered to take on this role. Many of them volunteered. Some, some were uh, brought in from other countries because of war and things like that. But many of them volunteered mm -hmm. this role because they got the perks of living in the wealthy person's house. They got right. to eat the food. They got a living quarters. They, they got their robes and their, their clothing from the master. And the master treated them like mm. what we would call today an employee. Right. All right. Think about it. A lot of volunteered slaves were in like what we call employees. More like an employee. You had to work so many hours in a day. You were under a contract. All right. Mm -hmm. And just like you do, you know. And many of these slaves, these guardians, they were educated. So what do you all do? Y'all go to college <laughs> and then you sign a contract or you, you're trying to get hired by someone. All right. We call ourselves employees. Back then, you will be called a servant, okay? Because you worked for someone and you were mm -hmm. in the contract with them, all right? This was volunteered, all right? And are That's we clear? Good. Good. Okay, so you see that category. Philemon, Philemon is a, another example. Paul interacted with a master and a slave. The book of Philemon is named after a master, Philemon. We believe he was a wealthy man. Philemon had a slave named Onesimus. Read the chapter and the book when you go home. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Onesimus ran away and found himself hooked up with Paul. Paul brought him in with the evangelistic team he had, and they were preaching the gospel and helping the mm -hmm. poor and all this kind of stuff. And at one point, Paul had ministered to him and told him he needed to go back to his slave. Onesimus ran away. He did something wrong. I don't know if he broke the contract. I don't know if he stole something mm -hmm. because in the book, Paul went to Philemon, the master, and said, if he stole anything, if he did anything, if he took anything from you, charge it to me. Yeah. So it's, it's as if Onesimus had done something because the slave was like, this type of slave was kind of like an employee. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get into the harsh slavery in a minute. But this type of slave was kind of like an employee. And so we have to get the culture down, the right. backdrop down to understand right. the Bible. Come right. on, someone. Yeah. When, when, when people are reading the Bible, people who are uh, unintelligent about the Bible, they're uninformed, they'll read the scripture and say, that's a white man's book. Why would you do that? It's because they don't understand context, culture. Mm -hmm. They don't understand history and that you have to take what was written put it back into its time right. and then make sense out of it. All right. So Philemon here, can we read that? Philemon here, a little backdrop. Okay. If this is good, somebody, somebody hit me and say, okay, <laughs> keep, keep going pastor. All right. So Philemon was the master. Onesimus was the slave. And so Paul told Philemon, basically, you got to take him back. So this is letting us know that mm -hmm. Philemon wasn't going to bring the slave back. Mm. And that Paul says, no, no, Onesimus, you owe your master. Right. You had something between you two. I don't know if it was a contract. I don't know what it was. But he says, Onesimus, you must go back. So that looks like he condoned slavery, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Right. And he did condone what was going on during that time. That was, it was slavery. It was a type of slavery. All right. But this wasn't abusive or harsh slavery. Right. I'm going to get to that in a minute. Now, look at what Paul told Philemon. Go mm -hmm. ahead. He said, for perhaps he was for this reason separated from you for a while that you would have him back forever. No, no longer, longer as, as a, a slave. slave. So he's saying, Philemon, take Onesimus back, but no longer mm -hmm. as a slave, but mm -hmm. what? But more, more than, than a slave, a what? A beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both, both in, in the, the flesh and, and in, in the, Lord. the Lord. All right, stick with me. Don't get bored. This is important, people of God. 
You need to be able to, as the scripture says, give a reasonable answer for everything you believe. Right. You need to explain there were different types of slavery. And the mm -hmm. Bible didn't was did not construct slavery. It addressed slavery. Right. It addressed the issue. Because you got to remember, there were freed men who were Christians, and there were slaves who converted to Christianity. Okay, that's what people don't understand. There were many slaves that converted to Christianity. There are many, uh, many experts will tell you there were up to over 30 million slaves. I don't know if this is accurate. Up to 30 million slaves in the Roman Empire. Wow. That meant that slavery was a system. It was a social construct. The Bible didn't necessarily condone it. It addressed it. And it brought slaves in as Christians. So slaves had mm -hmm. to have instruction too. Right. Just as the freedman. Okay, now peep this. Peep this. This is really interesting here. Philemon, when you read in verse 21... Uh, and I have it written here, the ambiguity of the statement in Philemon 21, the, unclear, the unclearness of it, has caused interpreters to question whether Paul asked, watch this, implicitly or directly, Philemon, the master, to grant Onesimus manumission, which is the act of freeing or liberating a slave. Mm -hmm. Read that for me, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Having confidence in your obedience. In other words, Paul says, <clears throat> Philemon, you know, I'm an apostle. I'm a church leader. Right. You're supposed to listen and submit to church and right. spiritual leadership. Y'all do understand you gotta, that. You listen to your spiritual leader. Do what I ask. I'm telling you to do the right mm -hmm. thing. Having confidence in your obedience. Obedience is not a bad word, people of God. In today's society, for some reason, people don't like the word obey, and that's okay. That's that's cool. But Paul says, having confidence in your obedience. In other words, I believe mm -hmm. you're going to bring him back, not just as a slave, but as a brother. Right. But look at what else he said. I write to you since I know that you will do even more than what I say. So we don't know what Paul meant by this. But whatever he meant, he wanted Onesimus, the slave, to be treated with honor and respect. Right. Whatever that was. And it looks like he was telling Philemon, the master, okay, don't treat him as a slave. Right, treat him right, as a fellow right, brother. Right. He's, your, he's your brother. And do even more than that. I don't know what that more than that means. Yeah. I don't know what that more than that means. We think it might be manumission. All right? Let's take it a step further. Mm. So now you understand, with this backdrop, why Paul gave instructions to the slaves, because many mm -hmm. slaves were Christians. So in Galatians 3.28, look yes. at this. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Colossians 3 and 11. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. And in Colossians, remember... Paul gave instructions to the household, kind of like what Pastor Ruth and I do when we, we teach you things like create a vision statement for your family, mm -hmm. love one another, treat one another this kind of way. Uh, we did a family series a couple of years ago, uh, giving instructions to right. the members of the church from the word of God on how we should conduct ourselves. Mm -hmm. In that, then he drops down and talks about slaves. Why? Because mm -hmm. there were slave Christians. Right. So as Christians, Paul did not want to discriminate and just only address free right. men and women. He also wanted to include Christian slaves, people of God. Mm -hmm. And all slaves were not under harsh treatment. Many of them were treated like employees. Continue. Mm -hmm. Slaves obey your earthly masters in everything and do it not only when their eye is on you, and to carry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Why did he say this? He said this because if you volunteer to be a slave, then you need mm -hmm. to do the work that you said you're supposed to be doing. You need to do what you're supposed to be doing, and you're supposed to be obedient. Just like when you... So sort of like the, an employee. Yeah. <laughs> you go to work. What do they have, Pastor <laughs> Ruth? Pastor Ruth worked in human resources. She was a human resources technician. And she was responsible for employees and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. They had a code of mm -hmm. conduct or an employee, employee handbook. handbook. <laughs> okay. So, y'all, when when you hear people talk about, well, that's slave, that's slave. Well, you, you slaves do. 
you, you, you're kind of like slaving to the system. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, let's wake up. Wake up, people of God. You work for someone. You're on a contract. You can't steal. You're not supposed to be talking back to folk and going crazy on the job. That's all Paul is telling these slaves right here. They were more like mm -hmm. indentured That's servants good. for a certain amount of time. That's good. And some of them wanted to live there. Okay. That's one type of slip. So let's be honest, people of God. When you mm -hmm. go on, they tell you what time you can take your lunch. That is true. They tell you what time you're supposed to clock in. And some of you have more freedom, but if you don't do that work, you won't be there. <laughs> So you're supposed to mm -hmm. obey. You don't like the word obey, but that's what you do when you go tomorrow. You will go and obey. They tell you what to do and you obey it. You do it. You can say, but well, they don't tell me what to do. Yes, they do because you're there. They do. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. It is. It, it, hey, but we have to bring some sure. context to this because people don't understand this. So when Paul says slave, mm -hmm. obey your earthly masters, it's like employee, obey the employer mm -hmm. in this case in this case in this case right. let's take it now you have all the right. next one all right let's move it on down the road move on down Volunteer, move on down the road let's go you got force peep this now i wanted to explain this i need mm -hmm. i might have to pull up my bible to do this and i think i'm going to do that in just a second pastor ruth mm -hmm. first peter chapter 2 18, 19, and 20 is the scripture that is used, that was used by the slave right. masters. All right. And it, if you read it at face value without reading what's before it, you mm -hmm. can come up with this interpretation. But the Bible says that you're supposed to rightly divide the word of God. Mm -hmm. So you can't take the scripture. And I've taught you this before. A text without context, context is a pretext. pretext. You can't take one scripture unless you know the backdrop to it and create a doctrine out of it. Mm -hmm. That's how you have so many denominations. They'll take one or two scriptures, create a whole denomination out of it. They break off of another one and start a whole nother organization yeah, based true. off of one true. or two scriptures. Okay, let's go. Pastor okay. Ruth, am I on point? You are. Okay. You ready? This is what I want to do. Yes, I want to do that. Can you read that one more time for mm -hmm. everyone? Go. Slate. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yes. yourselves to your masters, mm -hmm. not only to those sorry, mm -hmm, to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because they are conscious of God. But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. Okay. What? Yeah. Hey, look at it. Now, <laughs> I want you to pay attention to the word that's used here in the NIV as harsh. I don't even know if we should use the word harsh. You want to know mm -hmm. why? Because the Greek word is skolios. Skolios mm -hmm. means something that's dishonest, immoral, or non-Christian contextually i'm going to show you i'm going to take you to the bible in just a minute and we're going to read the scriptures before this and we're going to make sense out of all of this amen amen make sense out of it uh-huh all right now look at this the word is where we get our word scoliosis from which means mm -hmm. crooked or curved right Good. and so what is this talking about pastor let's take them to the bible pastor Ruth. okay all right let's get some word in here now First Peter chapter two, uh, just kind of look over my highlighting here, my Bible, my e-Bible. Mm -hmm. First Peter chapter two and uh, 11. Mm -hmm. The heading here says living godly lives in a pagan society. That's the whole thing. <laughs> living a godly life in a pagan society. Look at this. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires, which wage against your soul, wage mm -hmm. war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans. Those are unbelievers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who are we talking about? We're talking about Christians who are living amongst unbelievers. Right. That's the theme. Mm -hmm. All right. This is the theme. Drop the mm -hmm. 13. He's talking to free men now. Mm -hmm. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority. He's telling free men to do what? Submit. Submit yourself, mm -hmm. be obedient to every human authority, whether the emperor in Rome mm -hmm. as a supreme authority or to governors or 
who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. He's speaking to free people here. Mm -hmm. These are Christians. This is Christians Peter is talking to here. That's who Peter's talking to. <clears throat> Christians, let's get the context. All right? Uh, 15, for it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. These are non-believers. Mm -hmm. Foolish people are pagans. They don't believe that Jesus was the Christ and Messiah. Mm -hmm. 16, he says, live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Mm -hmm. show proper respect to everyone love the family of believers fear god honor the emperor the whole point is that as christians we're supposed to be in submission to uh the leadership mm -hmm. our government mm -hmm. right obey the rules so look at 18 are we there y'all with me mm -hmm. so now he addressed what free men and free women first christians now he's not going to discriminate and leave out the slaves because many slaves were Christians. Well, why do you have to say slaves? Because many slaves were not considered citizens of Rome. If you were a slave, you were often not considered a citizen. So if he only addressed free men and free women, he left the slaves out and didn't give them instructions about the same concept yeah. of being obedient in a pagan society. The idea is that if you, and you'll see that in a minute, if you are living for Christ, you are going to have to deal with persecution. That's all he's talk, <laughs> talking about. Look at this. Slaves, in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters. Mm -hmm. Since many of you are not considered citizens of Rome, you are still under, <clears throat> under subjection of someone. That's a leadership principle. Everyone's under someone. As a leader, I'm under Bishop Hockett. Mm -hmm. Everyone is under someone. There should be no loose vagrancy going on. Well, People say, you can't tell me what to do. Okay, well, go live on an island. All right? Mm -hmm. There has to be structure and order to life. Slaves, mm -hmm. in reverent fear of God, submit yourselves to your masters. Just like the freemen, you submit yourselves to the emperor. Not only to those who are good and considerate, okay? Some of you have employers that are just not nice, but to those who are harsh, it doesn't mean mm -hmm. that they beat you. They can be harsh and crooked and perverted mm. and never lay a hand on you. That's good. Can I, come on, let's get real. Look at this, 19. <clears throat> so this is what the slave masters read, 18, 19, and 20. For it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering. And here's the reason, people of God, please get mm -hmm. this, because they are conscious of God because they are conscious of God, because of their, they are conscious of God. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? If you are a believer in Christ, you will suffer persecution because of your belief. Mm -hmm. So he's speaking to slaves in that regard that some of you have masters who do not believe in Jesus Christ. They are crooked, immorally crooked. They are wicked. They're yeah. sinful and they might not treat you right. This was not justification for beating a slave right this was right. a slave uh peter's instruction to the slave to obey the master for watch this christ's sake mm -hmm. for your faith in christ don't give up on your faith in christ even if they mm -hmm. treat you crazy because of your faith stick to your yes, faith yes, he was yes, not yes, telling yes. this was not a manifesto to masters to give them right justification the, the right. for mm -hmm. beating someone because they didn't bring in 12 pounds of cotton am i teaching today okay mm -hmm. the reason look at the reason again in 19 because they are conscious of god for it is commendable if someone bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because why here's the reason they're conscious of god right. they are god fearers they believe in jesus christ he says, but how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong? What is he doing here? Mm -hmm. He's now using the metaphor of Jesus. He's not giving, he is not giving the masters the approval to beat a servant. And he's not telling the servants or the slaves that it's okay to be beaten, mm -hmm. just to be beaten. That's, and to be beaten at all. This is not justifi justifying beatings. He's saying, 
Christ received the beating. Look at this. But if you mm-hmm. suffer for doing good, if you suffer for doing good, not suffering because you didn't pick enough cotton. Right. If you suffer for doing good and you endure it, this is commendable before God. Why? Because in verse 19, because they are conscious of God, <laughs> their life is lined up with God. And if you go before this, he's speaking to the free men the same way. All of this is to the slave now and the free men. 19, right. 20, 21, all the way down is not just for the slave anymore. The conversation goes back to free people. All right. Good. It's about suffering for your faith, not being beaten as a slave. Does this make sense? People of God. Yes. Okay. So the Bible is not against you, black folk. People of color, the Bible is not against you. <laughs> you have to understand the Bible in its context. Who was he writing to? Why was he writing? The key is because they are conscious of God. If you bear up under suffering, you got to remember people of God. And and let me take them back to my screen. I want them to see my my beautiful face here. I want them to see my pretty face. Uh, Look at this. And I'm going to show you some things here uh, and and, and speak some life into you guys. Because uh, you've heard so many negative things. And as your pastor, Mm -hmm. I have to have to really put things into context, okay? Yes, yes, so let's yes. look at this again. Christian slaves should be willing to suffer because of their Christian faith. It's not advocating slave beatings by their owners. Mm-hmm. Here's the big picture. Christian slaves, just like free men, will be persecuted for being a Christian, not okay. a slave. This time was very dangerous for Christians. Here's a historical fact that so you can get hip to this. Mm-hmm. He was t- Peter... And Paul, all of them warned about the persecution that was coming to Christians. So just if if you're a slave and you're a Christian, you're going to get persecuted too. If you're a freeman and you're a Christian, you're going to get persecuted. Historical fact in AD 64, read that for me, babe. In AD 64, Nero blamed Christians for a fire in Rome. He had them fed to dogs, oh Jesus, or crucified and burned their bodies as torches. And this is the uh, reference point there. Yes. Tatisus. Annals. Annals. Okay. So this is history, people of God. Christians were burned. And uh, many of you know this if you've studied anything about the Bible or been in any, any type of biblical classes, mm-hmm. that Nero would often take Christians, kill them, and sometimes even alive, he would tar them, have them propelled on a stake, and then light them on fire and use Christians to light up his beautiful garden at night. Okay, this was the type of persecution that Christians went through. So for him to tell slaves, be obedient to your masters, you're going to deal with persecution Mm -hmm. had nothing to do with beating a slave because they were slaves and to get more work out of them. No, he's saying Mm -hmm. these crooked scolios, these immorally evil, wicked people you're going to be around are going to persecute you for your faith. Am I preaching to that? Man. Just trying to bring some clarity to the situation. Man, that's good. Okay. And somebody said, I know a few woke people who down the Bible and Christianity. Yeah. They, they, they're not as woke because they don't understand history. They don't know what's mm-hmm. going on. And contextually, they don't understand. And then, unfortunately, people take this and then they uh, continue to say the same things. And they're teaching the new generation this. And no one has mm-hmm. been taught. They're uninformed. I don't want to call them ignorant, but ignorant means uninformed. They're really ignorant of the Bible. They don't know. They've never been to theological school. They don't understand the context, the culture, the economy, the uh, social setup and construct in order to make things Mm -hmm. make sense. Mm -hmm. So let's take it to another level. Go ahead, Pastor Ruth. No, I, I was just thinking that when you're talking about not being educated, something that we, that I think you watched it with me. It was on uh, PBS, Mm -hmm. uh, The Great Civilizations. And uh, it talked about Christianity Mm -hmm. and how it was in Africa. And it was, was, you know, it was thousands of years before the, you know, it got to Europe Europe and all that. And so for people to say that it's a white man's religion religion is just not true. That's wrong. That's a black man's religion. People of God, it was, and I taught you that, I taught them that last year, Mm -hmm. that the Bible is a manuscript that was revered in Africa well Mm -hmm. before Europeans got a hold of it. Yeah. Well before Europeans got a hold of it. 
Okay. Yeah. Are we are we all right? Are we all right? We still together. I know some people were like, oh my God, I never heard that before. But this mm -hmm. this is this you have to be taught. How can they hear the scripture? Paul says, mm -hmm. how can they hear without a teacher? Mm -hmm. right? 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 And so you have to be taught. And New Birth is an educated place. Mm -hmm. Our folk are educated. We know our word. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here's something else. First Timothy one. Please write this down. First Timothy one, nine through ten. This flat out tells you how the apostle Paul felt about slavery. Mm. Flat out tells you about forced slavery. Mm -hmm. Okay? Forced slavery. He addresses harsh forced slavery. They had harsh forced slavery back then, just mm -hmm. like we had here in the Americas, using the African people, our ancestors. Now look at this. Uh, look at what Paul said. Go, mm -hmm. read it. We also Take your time and read it slow because okay. I need, it's a we lot of stuff it. in here and it's a lot of stuff that people struggle with. They need to hear the word mm -hmm. on it. Okay. Okay. We also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for, for lawbreakers. lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful, the unholy. Slow it down. Mm -hmm. and irreligious mm -hmm. for, for those, those who, who kill, kill their, their fathers, fathers or mothers, mothers for murderers. murderers. Slow it down even more mm -hmm. now. Go. For the sexually immoral. For the sexually immoral. For those practicing homosexuality. Mm -hmm. It's very, very clear. For those practicing homosexuality. Mm -hmm. For slave traders. For slave traders. Traitors and liars and liars and perjurers, perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to, to the sound, sound doctrine. Doctrine now, slave traders comes from a Greek word here, which means a slave dealer, trader in human beings, including kidnapping and then selling. All right, mm -hmm. get that screenshot. Y'all might need this. Is this good, somebody? Yeah. All right, this is good now. And, and uh, Rick, you're right on point. Rick Howling, you're right on point. Most people don't know that the Bible lines up with history. They, mm -hmm. they think that the Bible is some kind of fairy tale narrative. No, it's not. It's mm -hmm. a part of history. All right. Now, peep this. All right. Let's get on this. I like this. Y'all know I'm a teacher. I'm right in my zone now. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. I hope my white brothers and sisters get to see this teaching too. Please share it with them. Please share it with them, mm -hmm. all right? My white brothers and sisters, my Asian brothers and sisters, every, please share it with mm -hmm. them because we need mm -hmm. to get a proper mm -hmm. understanding of the Bible, all right? Paul was against force, slavery. S harsh slavery. He called them slave traders. Mm -hmm. uh, some translations, they call them men stealers, mm -hmm. men stealers. What was Paul doing? Well. Think about this very carefully. You Bible scholars, you've been reading through the word of God. Many of you in Deuteronomy or past it by now. Mm -hmm. All right. Pastor Harris is probably in Malachi at this point. All right. Um, a slave trader mm -hmm. points you back to Deuteronomy and the law. Thou shall not steal. Mm. See, that's in the law. Now, let's take it back. So if you can't steal, that means that forced slavery, even back in the Old Testament, was not acceptable because right. you were kidnapping, you were stealing people right. of God. So when it says thou shalt not steal, you, you're thinking about going into a store and stealing some mm -hmm. food. No, thou shalt not steal means you cannot take what doesn't belong to you. So I can't take another person and force them into slavery. That's kidnapping. Right. That's stealing. Mm -hmm. That's under the law. So. The Old Testament now, see, now that you have, you're woke, you understand this. Mm -hmm. The Old Testament wasn't really condoning slavery. It was addressing a social construct that was already in place. Mm -hmm. Wow. My Good. God. I know it's a lot to chew on. You might need to go back through and reread these mm -hmm. scriptures and go back through this teaching. Yes. All right. We're almost finished. John Wesley, you've heard that name before. He was the founder of the mm -hmm. Methodist movement, a celebrated preacher. He was an abolitionist from England in the 1700s. Yeah. He was against slavery. Now he lived in England and he traveled Europe a lot. So he understood the evil of 
slavery. Mm -hmm. And so while slave masters was preaching this, John Wesley was preaching the truth, but no one wanted to hear the truth because people don't like to hear the Bible. Look at this. Look at what he said about what Paul wrote in 1 Timothy. Mm -hmm. We just read. Look at what he said. Man stealers. stealers, the worst of all thieves in comparison of whom highwaymen and housebreakers are innocent. When then, what then? Oh, so I'm sorry, what then are most traitors in and Negroes. Negroes, procurers of servants for so America? He was calling out America. Mm -hmm. And all who list soldiers by lies, tricks, or enticements. Okay. So J Wesley was against slavery. He was mm -hmm. saying that slavery and forced slavery was worse than any other kind right. of stealing. Right. That's what he said. He says it's worse yeah. than anyone breaking in your house. Oh or men robbing you on the highway. Mm -hmm. He said, they're innocent compared to the men who steal Negroes mm -hmm. and sell them to the Americas and even in Britain. Come on, I'm preaching mm -hmm. today, man. Mm -hmm. I'm preaching today. And, and that's human. You're right, Audrey Jackson. Human trafficking today. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's the same. And the Bible speaks against it. So when people says that the Bible condones slavery, they don't know their history. They don't know what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. There are different types of slavery and it is what it is. People, it is what it is, but it does not condone harsh, forced uh, right. slavery and slaves being beaten and things like that. It does not mm -hmm. condemn that. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, condone, condone that. that. All right. Are we all clear? Are we all on the same page? Amen. See, good. this is this is good teaching here. What we have to do is get understanding. Mm -hmm. And so when you get an understanding, your faith increases. Your faith increases. The mm -hmm. Apostle Paul was totally against slavery, totally against slavery. Now, here's the last thing I'm going to share with you. Read this, Pastor. Mm -hmm. You preach this one. You preach this. <laughs> The this. only sanctioned slavery in the Bible, Romans 1, 1, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. Philippians 1 and 1, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons. Titus 1, 1, Paul, a servant of of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. to further the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness. That leads to godliness. Mm. Amen. So now my, my charge to my people at New Birth Church, especially the millennials, I hope they're on here listening because yeah. they're the ones that listen to all that foolishness. And it's a shame that Christian millennials don't even know their own Bible. Mm -hmm. And so why would you serve a God you don't even understand and you can't answer certain questions? I, I would struggle with that too. No mm -hmm. wonder they struggle with their faith. Mm -hmm. Millennials, please get this teaching down and mm -hmm. understand it and be able to explain it to folk. So when they challenge you, people who are woke, quote unquote woke, who really don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. They heard somebody else say something and they're just <laughs> repeating what someone else said. Mm -hmm. You can help them really get woke. Right. Amen. Right. Is that good? Is this right. good teaching people of God? Good. Is this good. good? So the only sl sanctioned slavery in the Bible is to be, a, to be a slave, slave of Christ. Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's the only sanctioned slavery in the Bible. If you enjoyed the teaching today, do I have any millennials? Because I, these millennials need to get on here. You guys are going to have to be the torchbearers. Right. All right. Let me see some millennials on here. And if mm -hmm. they don't, please share this with our millennials and tell them that they need yes. to watch this. Please watch it, please. Teens need to watch it, please. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you're hearing people uh, talk this stuff against Christianity, saying it's a white right. man's religion, they are very, very unintelligent. Mm -hmm. They haven't done their homework. Anybody who's read the Bible and know biblical history know that the Bible was heavily taught mm -hmm. and practiced in africa yes first before it hit europe yes all right now uh before some of you also they're leaving them and now some of them are leaving they figure the teachings over that's good they don't know that i'm getting ready to drop some more knowledge on them real quick uh go on and give go on and give we're going to be giving 
uh, the word. But while we're giving, I have mm -hmm. another piece of knowledge I want to share with you guys concerning the Catholic Church. I'm going to let the other ones go on off. So let's <laughs> go on and uh, give. Let's go on and give by phone. You do that, Pastor Ruth. Mm -hmm. Sure. By phone, 502-792-8245, online at newbirthchurch.org, or by mail, 3301 Linda Lane, Louisville, Kentucky, 40211. And as you can see, Pastor, he has our Covenant Keeper mm -hmm. uh, book. And these are people who have persons who have committed to being covenant keepers yes uh for new birth church yes and you can go on the website to get more information about becoming a covenant keeper you go to newbirthchurch.org and uh oh you want on something else yeah and to become a covenant keeper there are benefits that you receive mm -hmm. by being a covenant keeper your name and goes in this book you and your family's name and, and there are uh, things that we do for you. Yes. As, uh, and we pray as for you also. Keeper. And you'll be yes. getting something this week from me also. Again, uh, it might be a video teaching. So look in your emails. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, all my company keepers here. These are people who tithe consistently yes. off of their income and give a good offering uh, every time they get paid. So I mm -hmm. want you to become a covenant keeper. Go to our website. Go to our website. Newbirthchurch.org. Yes. Go to the website. I'm getting ready to drop some more knowledge real quick. Uh, for some, those of you who have to go, you can go and you can check this out a little bit later. But I am going to drop about five minutes of knowledge uh, for people who want to know a little bit more in depth of how uh, Christianity got spoiled. It's going to take me five minutes to explain it. And it's it's history. OK, uh, let's go to this website really quick. Go to New Birth Church. Go to New Birth Church mm -hmm. uh, and you can go to uh, Connect and become a covenant keeper. All right, New Birth Church, click on connect in the drop down menu, click on become a covenant keeper. And also I wanna thank the covenant keepers who joined uh, last week and the week mm -hmm. before. Thank you so much. We so appreciate you joining and becoming a covenant keeper. Mm -hmm. And uh, covenant keepers receive all types of benefits and these benefits are getting ready to get kick in gear. Uh, audio, video messages, we're gonna be doing a special uh google meet just with the covenant keepers mm -hmm. pretty soon ruth and i are going mm -hmm. to and mm -hmm. so go to this page and become a covenant keeper on our website all right all right all right for those of you who want to stick with me and you want some more truth if you want some more truth and say uh, because i got five minutes of truth i want to give you you want some more truth just holler say i want some more truth <laughs> all right if that's you just say more say, truth more truth i want five minutes just five minutes of your time Five minutes of your time and uh the other ones they can go on uh i gotta speak to my to the real people now because we gotta dig down a little bit deeper all right when it comes to slavery when it comes to slavery in the americas and the perpetuation of this this uh evil slavery the evil it started in the catholic church Hmm. For the most part, it started in the Catholic Church. How it got into this the theology that black folks are supposed to be subservient and beaten. They could be beaten and that they contorted and misconstrued scripture. It started in the Catholic Church. And, hmm. and then uh, I don't have it on my PowerPoint, but look up Henry the Navigator. Look up Henry the Navigator. Henry, Henry the Navigator. The Navigator. Henry the Navigator is an important name in slavery, especially here in America. Henry the Navigator was a prince. He had lots of money. He never navigated anything. He paid sailors to go and explore Africa because he was really, really enamored by Africa, the culture, the minerals, the land, and its people. These two, he had two explorers, mm -hmm. and Ruth, you can probably pronounce the names better than me. Nuno Tristeo, mm -hmm. Nuno Tristeo, yeah. and Anteo Gonclaves, all right? Gon Goncalves. So his name was Henry the Navigator. He had two explorers that would go and explore Africa. 
the two men captured several Africans and brought them back to Portugal, where Henry the Navigator was from. Portuguese began this whole thing. Mm. Right? One of the captured men, a chief, navigated with the Portuguese his freedom by saying, if you let me go back, I'll get you some more Africans that you can enslave. Mm. That kicked off this mm. whole Portuguese slave trading. Eventually, the Portuguese took black slaves to the Pope, all right? The Pope. The Pope, what he did was, and his name was <laughs> Pope Innocence. Isn't that a funny name? Wow. Pope Innocence. Pope Innocence decided to forego, and I have this in my notes, the previous criteria for enslaving a person. Remember, slavery had already existed. These were the three reasons or the criteria you can enslave a person. Prisoner of war, mm -hmm. if they were in debt or religious persecution, you could enslave a person for those three reasons, okay, back in the 13, 1400s. Right, so I was gonna say it's 1400s. 1400s, all right? Mm -hmm. Pope Innocent decided we're gonna forego all of that and now the criterion for enslaving a person is his skin color, wow. black. Wow. Pope Innocent did it, all right? At that point, it became legal. Legal. It became legal. Remember, the popes had all the power. Popes had more power than the king. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The pope, mm -hmm. the kings mm -hmm. had to get permission from the pope to do something. And so the pope, Pope Innocent, was the one who decided wow. to forego the previous criterion, which is to be a prisoner of war, you could be enslaved. Mm. Indebtedness. I know they're leaving, but I know the, no, the real people want this. Indebtedness and religious persecution. Mm -hmm. Religious persecution. He says, forget all of that. Now, the criterion, the main criterion for a person being enslaved is the skin color. They have to be black. Okay? Steve. And the rest it's is his history. history. All right? Okay? Y'all with me? Wow. Okay? Wow. So, don't blame the Bible for ignorance. Don't blame mm -hmm. the Bible for slavery. No. The right. Bidens man- It didn't create it, as you It say. didn't create it. It addressed slavery and tried to get people free from slavery. The, 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 the messages in the New Testament, two slaves were two Christian slaves. Mm -hmm. Teaching them, listen, be obedient. Just like it taught free men, be obedient to the emperor. Mm -hmm. It was no different. Yeah. Same thing. All right. We all clear on this. We all clear. That's good. Amen. So it was the Catholic Church that really got this started, people of God. And it's actually a miracle that African Americans were able to recapture our mm -hmm. history through the Bible without really even knowing that a lot of the Bible started in Africa at that time. Right. right. And it's amazing that African slaves, for many of them, embraced the Bible. And I believe it was a spiritual connect that they had. Mm -hmm. And they knew that what the white masters were teaching them was not right. Right. Even though they couldn't explain it all. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's enough teaching today. I'm done. I am finished. And I all hope right. you got something. I hope you learned something during this Black History yes. Month. Uh, and uh, taking it to the next level. Amen. Is mm -hmm. that good? All right. Let's give some shout outs and let's go home. Okay. All right.